I think we can all agree modded Game Boys are pretty freaking cool, but they can get pretty expensive too once you grab a new shell, buttons, and a $60 IPS kit. I know some people can't afford it and some people just don't want to spend that much money. So today we're going to make the cheapest modded Game Boy possible and it only costs $10. If you've been modding Game Boys for a while, you're probably familiar with the Backlight and Vivert mod. For those who aren't, this is a relatively simple mod where you remove the old reflective polarization film and replace it with a new one in a diffused backlight. You can also solder this Vivert chip to get a much cleaner look. Essentially, this is what Nintendo should have done from the start in 1989. The title of this video is the cheapest Game Boy mod, and in the spirit of that, I will be using all the original parts. So not only am I going to teach you how to perform this mod, I'm also going to show you how to give your console a deep clean and how to fix those pesky vertical lines. And while this is a relatively simple mod, we still have a lot to go over. This mod does require soldering, so you will need an iron and other basic tools needed to solder. I'd also recommend a little bit of soldering experience before attempting this. It's all simple steps that can just be a little time consuming, but if you're gonna install the Bivert chip, I wouldn't say that lifting the two required pins is a beginner move. Other than that, it's a pretty basic solder job. And the last thing before we get to the tutorial, I bought this from Zed Labs for just under $10, and you can get it even cheaper when you use code Jake at checkout. Anyways, that's enough shilling for now, let's get to the tutorial. Time to build the stealthiest Game Boy mod you'll ever see. Let's take it apart. Now normally you have six tri-wing screws holding this back half together, but in my case it's Phillips for whatever reason. I don't know, I didn't build this. Let's take those out, and once you have all six of those screws out, you should be able to take this apart. I recommend folding it open like a notepad because there are two halves connected by one ribbon cable, and you can just pull that up and out. And I'm actually going to start with the front half here. Let's open up our mod kit. This is the Bivert chip. This little guy is totally optional. If all you want to do is just install a backlight, you can totally do that. But with a Bivert chip, it's going to have a lot more contrast. It's going to look a lot nicer. I'm going to do it. I highly recommend you do it. Plus, I don't know of any places that just sell the backlight and not the Bivert chip. It's already an extremely cheap mod as it is. So let's install this. I'm gonna leave it in the shell so it's not super wobbly. So what we're gonna do here is lift up pin six and pin seven. I'm gonna set some flux down. We're gonna reflow that solder. I'm gonna stick my tweezers underneath that pin. We're gonna heat up that pin with your soldering iron and try and lift that up. I cannot tell if I ripped that or not. I'm gonna try and clean up all this old flux so it's easier to see. And this little thing right here is the lifted trace that I just tore off. It shouldn't be an issue because we're only connecting that pin to the board and not back to the Game Boy. Now we're going to lift this one next to it. And now we have those two pins lifted. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slide this right into here. And to make sliding that board in a little bit easier, we're going to trim these two pins right here. Not much, but it makes it a little bit easier to keep this flat. And I'm going to get some Kapton tape to hold this board into place. We want to make sure of a couple things. One, that these pins line up with the slots for them on the board. And two, that all three of those holes line up with the points on the board. And this hole here should be cut out for that point there. So I'm going to start with soldering those pins down. And then we can move on to the other solder points. And the one thing you don't want to do is bridge those two connections like I just did. It should look something like that. Be very careful not to bridge those two pins. Now I'm going to remove this and we're going to put some flux down over these three holes and add solder to each of them. Then we can add some solder to the ground there. For some reason, mine is long and red, but that's fine. Doesn't really matter what color it is. Just ground is typically black and we can solder this wire to ground here. And then I'm going to solder the other end to this ground post over here. And we're done with the back half. Now that we're done with that, I'm going to take the back half apart. It is just these two screws here and these two screws here. And we can set this off to the side for now. I'm doing this because I want to clean the shell pretty deeply. The whole point of this is to make it as cheap as possible. So we're going to be reusing the shell. And I'm going to go over how I clean up all of my shells. Take these four screws out. Then we're going to take out these three battery contacts. You can do that by pressing down on this here and pushing it forward and do the same to these two up here. And that is the back half complete. Then we can take out these 10 Phillips screws on the front half. Then we can just lift up from both sides. It might stick to the shell a little bit. That's all right. And that's our front half out. 
Then we can just dump all of these pieces into a bucket and wash it in some hot soapy water. They're pretty dirty. You can wash the metal pieces, just don't let them soak in the water too long. And unfortunately, the screen lens came off in the wash. It's 30 year old glue, you can't expect too much. I'll probably end up replacing this anyways because it's pretty scratched up. So I did some testing with the multimeter and it turns out that this last pin is ground. So you can just solder it to right there, right where that giant glob of solder is. You could easily just connect it without a wire. Before we get into the backlight portion, I'm just gonna finish up the back half. All we gotta do is put it back together. If you didn't clean yours, you don't have to worry about this. And I'm gonna use this Kapton tape from earlier to just secure this long wire down. Now it's time to mess with the front half. If you haven't cleaned the front half of your PCB, now's the time to do so. I highly recommend it. Just use some isopropyl alcohol, a toothbrush, clean up all the contacts for the buttons. It'll make life a lot easier when you're trying to play. There are two screws down here that are a lot smaller than the rest. We're gonna remove those. And this is where I highly recommend a plastic spudger. I would not use any metal tools here. But there's a little slot up at the top middle where you can pry the screen up. Be very, very careful though. You're gonna to wanna to open it like this, the opposite of a book, like a manga. And as you can see in here, it's pretty tight. This is where things are gonna get tedious. Very, very tedious. If you have a box cutter or preferably a craft knife, we're gonna remove this reflector here. As you can see, there's kind of two layers of glass. We don't wanna remove either of those sheets of glass. So we're gonna try very carefully to get in just like that. And right here you can see a bit of a, like a brown yellow layer. That's the polarizer. This is the reflector, that's the polarizer. You wanna get the polarizer as well. Be very careful not to poke your craft knife through this ribbon cable on the side. We just wanna get this up enough that we can grab it with our fingers or our tweezers or something and pull it up. I'm actually spraying some IPA in there just to hopefully loosen up the glue. There we go. There we go. Let's go. And now it looks like this. Now we're just gonna get some IPA in there, clean up all that residue, make sure it's nice and clean. Normally you should not spray any IPA into a screen. This is a little bit different. Now I'm gonna use a microfiber cloth to finish everything up. Now we can take the backlight and peel off the layers of both sides. Don't peel this off. That's the diffusing layer. We're gonna stick this in here just like that. And then our two wires are gonna hang out down here. And there's a capacitor right here in the middle. That is where we're gonna solder our wires to. Negative on the right and positive on the left. Negative wire, positive wire. I'm gonna recommend flux, like always. And I'm gonna add some new solder to both sides too. Should make things a lot easier. But before we can solder the positive wire down, we have to solder a resistor. I'm gonna snip this pretty close on both ends there. So now it's about that size. I'm gonna add a bit of solder to this end here. Then I'm gonna add a bit of solder to this end of the red wire. And then I'm just gonna solder the resistor and the wire together. Then I recommend either wrapping this in Kapton tape or sliding a bit of heat shrink around it. Then we can solder the other end of the resistor to that positive end of the capacitor. Slide that heat shrink over. Then we can solder the negative wire to the negative part of the capacitor. Then I'm gonna clean off my soldering iron tip and shrink that tubing down. I did not clean the tip very well. And that is the end of the soldering portion. Before you go any further, I highly recommend trimming the plastic here to guide the wires out. Unless you're okay with the screen lens not sticking down right because the shell is bowing. You're also probably gonna wanna scrape up all that old glue to get your screen lens to actually stick down properly. Now you're gonna actually wanna power the back half of your Game Boy. And before we turn it on, we're gonna plug in the ribbon cable. Now we can turn it on. Our backlight will be on, but we can't see anything. That is where the polarizer comes into play. We can lift this up once again and slide it through there, and now we can see the screen, and that I have lines on the screen that I need to fix. Assuming you're using the Bivert chip, if it looks like this, rotate it 90 degrees. Then you're gonna wanna cut it to fit between the backlight and the screen. We can peel off both sides. Try not to touch anything but the sides, and don't lose the orientation you have it in. I didn't realize that was sticky. So I'm gonna slide this out. And slide our backlight in there. Very nice. That is what it should look like. We do have one quick thing to fix here. 
And we're gonna go ahead and remove this black sticker. But what we need to do here is turn our soldering iron back on and really make sure that your tip is clean. And then we're gonna heat up right along here, just going back and forth. It might create more lines, that's all right. Let it cool down and see what lines are left and then focus on those problem areas. That was another five minutes. Now we can turn this off, unplug the front half, if this is still sticky, you can put it back on. It doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to hide that back there as much as I can. We can put those two tiny screws back in. Just make sure you don't screw through one of those wires we just installed. Now we can put in our buttons and membranes. And since we put those screws back in, that should help make these screens not fall out. And just remember that there's a little notch on the speaker, so it only goes in one way. And now you just have to screw all 10 screws back in. And just like earlier, we can slide this ribbon cable back into its slot, close it up, flip it back over, and then put your six probably tri-wing screws back in there. Minor Phillips for whatever reason, once again. I have no idea if this is for IPS mods or not. It looks like it's not. It's definitely for the OSD. But for now, it'll be fine. After I've spent a while with it, I'm going to give you a review and it'll look a lot nicer than this. I really wish that the polarization film that's included wasn't sticky. The adhesive isn't really necessary here. And with how little room you have to work with, bubbles are bound to happen. Mine has bubbles and I used to install a ton of screen protectors when I worked at AT&T. With how dark the polarizer is and how bright the backlight is, it's not too noticeable, but it's something that my brain will always be looking for. Z Labs at the very least does sell the polarizers without the adhesive back, but unfortunately it's sold separately. One other little thing about the polarizer is I wish it was green. I know that people famously made fun of the DMG's pea green screen, but I was hoping to keep mine looking as close to the original as possible. You can buy a ton of different colors for the backlight, but I was also hoping it would look green while off too. Other than the polarizer, I genuinely love this mod. You're not just swapping out the entire front half like an IPS mod, you're actually modifying the original screen. Don't get me wrong, I love how easy the DMG's IPS mod is, but this was a very welcome change of pace for me. It may sound weird, but I have more of an attachment to this boy. This boy is my son. But since I brought it up, we should probably compare it to an IPS mod. It's pretty obvious which one's better. The IPS display is crisp with multiple color palettes and adjustable brightness. The Bivert mod, while also crisp, lacks more than one color palette in one brightness level. Not to mention, it still has the slow pixel response time of the original LCD. But if you want the original look and are willing to put in the time and effort that this mod requires, I definitely recommend the Bivert mod. But if you like IPS mods more, I do sell them pre-modded on my website, retroremastered.com. All of the models, not just DMGs, along with cool shirts like this one that's now finally available. So like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. Along with cool shirts like this one that's now finally available, because we do what Nintendo should have done from the start.